Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. The lady and I are out in the woods today. Beautiful, beautiful fall morning. The trees have turned, they're just, probably we're at our peak right now. And we decided to go for a walk in the woods and uh, just, just look at some trees. And I'm standing between two southern yellow pine trees. Now that's what I'll be using in this cabin build. Some of the logs are already cut and stacked and ready to come out of the woods. There's an individual who is doing this for us through the sawmill. And we're waiting on him to finish getting all the logs to the sawmill so that they can be prepped for us. They'll saw two sides and we'll take it from there. We'll be peeling the bark off down through the camium layer and, and starting on the build, the actual build. But we just wanted to walk through the woods today and to show you some pine trees. This pine tree on my right is really a sweet tree uh, for a log wall. I've worked with smaller stuff and I've worked with stuff that was oh two and a half times the diameter of this tree. But I'd rather work with trees that would be no less than 10 inches on the tip after it's cut. That's the small end of the log and the bud is the uh, or it's naturally be the trunk down and close to the ground. If you look at this tree up about as high as I can reach, from there on up it is really really a straight tree. Uh, the log that would be cut out of that has it's a slow taper. It doesn't taper real quick which you kind of want logs if it's possible to have a slow taper to them. And when you put the logs in the walls, of course, you reverse the butts and the tips in the wall. And we'll be getting into that. But from about where my hand is on up to where the limbs actually start, I could probably get a 24, 26 foot log out of that. It'd be a nice straight log. Now this, this tree here's got a little curve to it. And so up there about, I would say nine feet from there on up to where the limbs start cropping out, you could get a 22, 24 foot log, which would be a good size wall log. From, from about nine feet down, that, that could be usable wood. But I think that I would cut that off and have that sawn into lumber. And the same way with this tree, where it makes its first little tiny cro uh, crook to it, from there down to where it would be sawed off at the ground, that makes good lumber. Now this, this stand of timber that we're in, it's, it's spaced out quite a bit. Actually in 1937, this timber was cut all off of this place when my daddy was a little bitty boy. So these trees that you see here, there are a few scattered around that would date back prior to 1937. So this is, probably third growth, uh, second or third growth pine timber. And it is a slow growth pine. It doesn't grow real quick. And it, it's, a good, it's a good log to work with, a good tree. We'll be showing you some other trees. Uh, there's some oak trees around that would actually make wall logs, which I've used before for, well, the little smokehouse was, was oak. And they're a little bit harder to find around on this place than the, than the pines are. So we'll be showing you some of them directly. I've found a tree here I want to show you. This tree's got a lot of character to it. All the way up. Now, I don't recommend using a tree like this in a, in a wall. It's a pretty tree, but it's just got too much, way too much character to it. And the one right behind it there has got some character to it also. Once you get past that, from that last curve in it on up, it all the way up to where you would top it out, it's got a nice wall log there. But I would not recommend cutting this to have a full length 24, 26 foot log out of it. It just is a little too crooked. Let's walk on up here and see what we can find. Uh, 
that's not too terribly bad. You can get quite a bit of footage out of that as far as linear feet of wall log. Right in that area right there, you can see there's a curve, or a crook in the tree from there on up, or actually from that point all the way down to right about there, you could get a wall log. This is what happens to a pine tree when the, the beetles get in it. It'll, it'll die and then eventually we'll get some pretty good wind and it'll, it'll bring it down. You can see these little holes here. That's beetles that's in that tree. That tree will, if it doesn't recover, it'll probably end up just like this one here. There's a tree here I wanted to point out to you. I'm not sure if you can see how the bark seems to spiral to the left. It seems to be twisting this way around the tree. Of course, my motion was pretty exaggerated. That tree would have left-hand grain in it. That bark is giving you an idea of what's going on inside the tree. From what I have read and it actually experienced, a tree with left-hand grain will twist. And a tree with straight grain or right-hand grain won't. I read that in an old, old book years and years ago. And I have seen where the grain turns to the left. And since I'm a right-handed person, I hew right-handed. Hewing a left-hand grain log, I can really tell it because the ax wants to follow the grain when you start your, your hewing on the top of the log. So if you run across a tree that's got bark that's kind of twisting to the left, I think I would leave it because it might cause you some problems. It could be safely sawed into some, some lumber that could be, you know, thinner pieces where it could be easily or contained. But when you're trying to get a timber out of a tree or a wall log, you want something that's going to stay fairly stable for you. Well, this is a sweetheart. That would really be nice in a wall. All the way up. Beautiful. I showed you a, a yellow pine that had some left-hand grain. This is post oak. And you can see how the grain spirals to the left. It's even more visible than the pine tree was. If you were to cut that tree, probably firewood. This is a post oak. If you look at the bark on that, it spirals to the right, right in that area there. And actually, oh, and up, it's got some moss growing on the north side of the tree, but the bark spirals to the right. And actually, if you opted to use oak for your wall logs, I think I could take this tree and do something with it. It's pretty sweet. It's not a big tree. Down at the bottom, it's probably 15, 16 inches. And where you would have to cut it off, you could get an 11 inch tip probably pretty easy. Up there where the limbs began, just below that. That's interesting, a little post oak. Surely that shape could be used for something. You have to let your imagination run wild. Well, I'm glad y'all decided to join us in our little trek through the woods today. We've been out here quite a while. Decided to stop here at this little branch and sit down and rest a little bit. But I hope you've been able to learn a little bit about trees. Uh, I know I didn't go into a lot of detail. And not everybody has access to southern yellow pine. That's just in our area. So whatever trees that you have that you can you have access to that you can use for your cabin build if you can just get stuff that uh, is fairly straight and got kind of a slow taper 
from the butt to the tip. You can use them for wall logs. There's been all sorts of trees used in cabin builds. It's just whatever they had when they, when the settlers and pioneers came through an area and decided to settle down, what they used was what was readily available. And in our area, we have yellow pine, but there are cabins that were built in this area. I've seen and looked at some of them that were actually built out of oak. That, that's good. I've, I've built with oak. It's, it's a good wood to work with. So whatever you happen to have that's readily available to you, that's what you would be probably be using for your, your cabin build. And I wish you the very best in what you endeavor to do, because it is our dream to help you realize your dream. God bless you.